Hello, is anyone out there? It's been a long time since we periscoped, so... Hi David, nice to see you. Hi Tina, nice to see you. Couldn't see you both in the service today. You are regulars in our month start meeting and uh, happy December. And uh, well, it's Christmas time. The Lord is gracious in our lives that we could come and enjoy one more Christmas in our life. Yeah, I, I heard there was some rain. While we were inside, it was raining outside. Uh, we were just three or four in number today. But uh, towards the end, there was a move. Uh, you know, there are, there, there are those moments where we experience the move of the Holy Spirit that just overwhelms us. And towards the end of the meeting, when we spoke about a point, <clears throat> suddenly we felt the move of the Holy Spirit so mightily. And uh, many a time, the move of the Holy Spirit is not just talking in tongues, but that divine feeling of love. Uh, uh, that love, the, the overwhelmed feeling just fills us. And you feel that life is just worth to praise the Lord. Uh, uh, Shraddha missed you out today for the service. Uh, but there is that overwhelming feeling, you know, uh, that just, just, just draws you. I think that is the <clears throat> most holy place experience where you just feel numb, where you just surrender your bodies, to the move of the Holy Spirit. So, in all our in all what we do, we should have that moment where we 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 get overwhelmed with the Spirit of God. Else, whatever we do will not make any sense. So, we should keep on asking God for infilling. And when we minister, look out for that moment when we serve, when we pray, when we praise, when we read the Bible. Look for that moment where you are overwhelmed by His presence and love. Amen. So I thought, okay, I will just come before I uh, retire for the day. Many of them could not come, so I just thought I will just spend some time with you and tell you what I shared in the church today. Deuteronomy 11 and verse <clears throat> 7 and 8 is the theme for this month. I was hoping the Lord will give some Christmas thoughts, but... Uh, I was led to this passage today, literally. <clears throat> so it says, But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong and go in and possess the land, whither you go to possess it. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. See, when, when Moses is telling about your eyes have seen the great acts of God, he's, he's telling you, you remember what all God has done in your life. There are two ways of living our life. Either it's by the negative uh, negativity that we have had. Many people are bruised, hurt, uh, and, and they, they do not feel like moving high in life. They are just covered with guilt, shame uh, and virtually when people go into negativity they lose their hope, they lose their trust, they are depressed they have the suicidal feeling, they don't like anybody they think what they say should happen uh, their eyes see always negativity their eyes see always negativity but a, a person who is called by God has something beautiful to see with his eyes my question to you this night on the first December night is what, what do you see with your eyes? Have you seen the great acts of God? Have you seen the great acts of God? If we lose our eyesight from the great acts of God, uh, we are bound uh, to fail. We are, we are bound to falter. And here we read in Deuteronomy 11 and verse 7, But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Moses is telling, you have seen it. You have seen it all. Now what all did they see? If you come to 11 chapter 2, 
it says and you know this day for i speak not with your children which you have not known which have not known and which have not seen the chastisement of the lord your god his greatness his mighty hand and his stretched out arm so they have seen the lord's hand in work at work in their life number 1 the lord's work in their life have you seen the acts of the lord the lord personally number 1 which you have to see is the yeah the the lord your god his greatness his mighty hand his stretched out arm in 2016 how often did you see the act of the lord how often did you see his greatness his mighty arm his greatness his stretched out arm praise the lord in fact in the cross he stretched out his arm his hands are stretched out for us his hands are stretched out for us and we should never forget that uh, that we have seen the great acts of the lord number one his act which is outstretched arm just remember those times instead of wallowing in negativity the way in which god's hand moved for you hallelujah amen third verse verse 3 the second act which they had to see is his miracles his acts which he did in midst of egypt unto pharaoh the king of egypt and to all his land so there was plagues unleashed among egypt where they were held captive just look at the way in which god exhibited its power as he as he as as the world went through different crises but we were not prayed to that the zika virus the in 2016 we see a lot of terror attacks we see uh, the world becoming a dangerous place to be in and uh, uh, we see the, that the lord proved to the world that he is the only hope only hope what we see in india now it's the act of god that's what i believe but still the trouble which people are going through through demonetization people are having salary but they cannot take their uh, salary out they are they are suffering they are going in pain so remember what all he did to the world remember see what he has done in the world for some it was uh, it was a good year for some it was not that great but whatever it be remember that god is in charge of the world and we have seen climatic uh, disturbances earthquakes famines uh do you ask me but does god allow evil he permits evil uh many a time uh, to to lift its hood so that people will understand who he is pain is the megaphone through which he speaks that's what philippians he says so when job was uh, going through tough times he said to his wife we receive good won't we receive evil from him so the uh, the matter the matter is uh, we have come to once one more christmas season with joy with happiness and we have to see the great work of god around us amen and the third thing which you have to understand is in verse 4 and what he did unto the army of egypt unto their horses to their chariots how he made the water of the red sea to overflow them as they pursued after you and how the lord had destroyed them unto this day Now remember there were armies that were coming against you to pull you back egyptian army egyptian army with horses with chariots trying to pull you back pull you back from your faith but what the lord has done is he he made the water of the red sea to overflow them and the lord destroyed them unto this day praise the lord when i spoke this in the church i told the wonderful people who gathered i told them we could have been possessed by evil spirits we could have been possessed by addictions evil addictions we could have been possessed by the pharaohic uh, chariots that came and pulled us back but what the lord has done is he has destroyed them and he had did not let them come near us hallelujah that's the greatest thing which we have to praise the lord especially where the people are obsessed and 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 are moving with evil spirits around uh trying to hurt one another harm one another abuse one another mal- malign one another the lord has uh destroyed them unto this day this very day he has destroyed them 
But we should not go back to Egypt. That's another story. But God has destroyed those forces. God has destroyed those spirits that were working against you and placed you in a wonderful place. Amen. Hallelujah. So first thing which you have to remember is see the acts which he has done with his great arm for you. For you. That's for you. Second, see the great acts which he did in Egypt uh, in front of Pharaoh. That was judgment. Big judgments which he said. The plagues, the famine, the negative, the, the calamity which says that without Jesus there is no hope. The third thing, remember what he did to the Egyptian forces. Remember what he, he did uh, as, as the chariots were drowned in the Red Sea. Remember that he did not see that uh, those chariots and horses were coming to take you back, but they are destroyed till this day. Hallelujah. And the fourth thing which you have to remember and see is verse 6. What he did unto Datan and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, the sons of Reuben, how the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their households and their tents and all their substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. Now that is what God has done in the church. In, your, in our local churches, in the universal body of Christ. See, being in the, uh, the Datan and Abiram are negative examples in the church. They were swallowed by God. They, they were swallowed by the earth, in fact, because they murmured against the man of God, Moses. They said, uh, is, are you the only person whom God speaks to? And what happened is, in, because of that, God judged them, their tents, their household are all pulled back. There are also instances in the universal body of Christ where God ju judged people. Where God judged people. And thank God, we are not a part of it. Hallelujah. These four things should always ring. The great acts of God. The great acts of God personally for you. The great acts of God which he did uh, in midst of Egypt, which are the judgments. The great acts of God which he did to the evil spirits that they didn't get back, get to you. The great act of God which he cleansed the church where he uh, where, where he is preparing the bride of his own which he loves. And that's what he is telling you. Your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord, which he did. Verse 8 says, And that you may, uh, uh, there, therefore you shall keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that you may be strong. The idea is three, threefold. The idea. You have to keep the commandments for three things. Number one, to be strong. Christmas this time, be strong. Be strong because your eyes have seen the great acts of God. This is not the time to be lazy. This is not the time to uh, be like a sluggard. This is a time to be strong. Hallelujah. Be strong. Be strong. When, he, when the angel came to uh, uh, Daniel, he said, be strong. When the angel came to Elijah, he said, be strong. Paul says to the church, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Be strong. See the acts of the Lord. Be strong. Do not uh, be like the world where they lose their heart and 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 they lose their focus and and do do things which are against uh, you know life and love be strong second that you may go in you may go in now we are in the fag end of the year i believe 31 more days 30 days more there are many more promises through which you have to go in you have to go in hallelujah some good Wonderful things where you have to go in. Go in. Break through to your hard doors. Break in through your family. Break in through iron doors. Break in. Go in. Go in, not go out. Go into the blessings of God. And the third important thing is be strong. Go in and possess the land. Possess the land. Going in is different. Possessing is different. So going into the promises and possessing. So you have to... Do the, the great acts of the Lord. Your eyes have seen the great acts of the Lord. As you see the great acts of God, as you see the hand of God around you, in your life, in the world, in, in around the evil forces and, uh, and, and in the church, <laughs> be strong. Go in and possess the land. Hallelujah. I, I, we, we, I shared this. Only three people were there in the church. Uh, and... And then the moment which came is next, next verse. This verse 
send the anointing and I'm still feeling the goosebumps. Just, just, be, just be with me. Whether you go to process it. Hallelujah. 9 and 10. And that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them to their seed a land that floweth with milk and honey. What God gives is much beyond your expectation. It's a land that flows with milk and honey. It's the See, when you are in the promised land of God, you will have a lot of milk and honey. Milk of God's word. Honey also signifies his word. Milk is the beauty of his word. And honey also shows his goodness. Once you are in the land which God promised you, it's all his doing. It's a land flowing. Flowing constantly in your soul. Wherever you go, you will hear God's word. Wherever you speak, whatever you see, you will see God's word. Hallelujah. You will just know the beautiful, beautiful face of God. So the land which flows with milk and honey. And verse 10 says, For the land where you go to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from where you came out. Now don't compare Egypt with where you are going. It's incomparable. What happened in Egypt? Look at that. Where thou sowest thy seed and water it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. Where thou sowest thy seed, water it with thy foot. Hmm. You have to do many things to water it. See, in Egypt, what you have to do is, you have to sow. You have to sow. Sowing is also your responsibility. Sowing is your responsibility. Watering with your foot is yours. And garden of herbs. But verse 11. But the land where you go to possess. It is a land of hills and valleys. It's a land of beauty. Oh hallelujah. It's a land of hills and valleys. And drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Drinketh water of the rain of heaven. You need in water. The water comes from heaven. Water comes from heaven. Oh, hallelujah. I could not stop. I, the, the, then it says, The land which the Lord thy God careth for, the eyes of the Lord are always upon it, from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. That is the land which God wants to give you. Where are you living? Are you sowing your seed and then watering your land? Watering? Uh, with your food or are you living in the land which is flowing with milk and honey what we need is the word of God if the word comes into your life don't worry don't worry the land of hills and valleys oh praise the Lord it's a beautiful land not like Egypt which is made by humans you the pyramid uh, and all those things that's all they take and show but the beautiful land of Israel one time we should go there but the land which, the spiritual land which God has given us, it is a land flowing with milk and honey, with hills and valleys. And the most important part is, it drinks the rain, it drinks the rain that comes from heaven. The blessings that we get should be anointed by God, should be watered by heaven. I thank the Lord when this, when this part came, I could not contain in the church a land which drinketh the water of the rain of heaven. Imagine your blessings being anointed by God. Anointed blessings. There is a difference between blessings and anointed blessings. And I pray that this month we will walk into some anointed blessing, blessing zone which drinks water from the rain that comes from heaven. The rains that come from heaven. Because once the rain comes from heaven, we will bear fruit. Egypt fruit is manif it's it's different. Egypt fruit is different. Egypt is you have to sow. You have to do the work. You have to till the land. You bear the fruit of whatever you do. But what the promised land experience does is it it lives because of the blessing of God. Human efforts is different from divine efforts. If God bursts into your life, it's divine. If you try to do things on your own, you have to struggle a lot. But if God just breaks forth into your life, precious people of God, the land, your family will drink the, the, uh, the, 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 
the, the rain from God and produce fruits. Why many people are in bondage? Why many people are still in, 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 though they are in the church, they are not able to bear fruit? Why? Because the land which they are in, they are not getting river, uh, uh, rain from heaven. They are not getting rain from heaven. Hallelujah. There is a difference between seeking something and things coming in search of you. There is a thing, there is a difference in which, uh, you know, you, you, you pursue something and, and the blessings pursue you. When you pursue blessings, that is Egypt. When the blessings pursue you, <laughs> that's the promised land. Because that is sent by God to you, that will drink rain from heaven. It will drink rain from heaven and produce fruits which are bearing much fruit. The problem in the modern church is we are still not in the promised land. We are not living in the land which is flowing with milk and honey. We want the Egypt still. We, we like the Egyptian horses. We like... Some people are do not like Egypt, so they are outside, but still they are in the midway. They are not yet into the promised land. If you are in the promised land of God's word, if you make the word of God as your passion, believe me, my friend, my dear brother, my dear sister, you will be used by God. You will be used by God. That's the biggest thing. You will be used by God to be a channel of His blessing and nothing greater than that. Imagine, through your life, you change someone else for the better, for their blessing. When you say a word that becomes a blessing to their life, when you speak a word that illuminates a room, your presence just uplifts faith, uplifts hope. When you are not in the promised land, your, pre your presence will bring in people to scratch their head why this fellow is here. But when you are in the promised land, people will look up to you. They will look up to you. They, will, they know that you are a man of wisdom. They know that you have something which is from God. Because, because our land drinks water, drinks the rain from heaven, drinketh water of the rain of heaven. Hallelujah. How is your land today? What your eyes have seen, the great acts of God. Oh, I feel like overwhelmed. That, that, that's, that's a feeling. And I thank the Lord that this Christmas, many blessings will come your way that will just drink water from the rain that comes from heaven. But never never lose hope. You have to be in the land flowing with milk and honey. Say bye-bye to Egypt. Look to God and come to that blessed experience where you just delight in Him and He satisfies the desires of your heart. He satisfies the desires of your heart. And that you would become a game changer, a history changer, but your eyes have seen the great acts of God which he did. Have you seen it? Think about what he has done around you, in your circle. How the Lord worked for you. How the Lord proved he was God in the society. How God proved himself by thwarting evil attacks from getting near you. And then be strong. Go in. Possess the land. Oh, praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless your people. That they will go in. Be strong, go in and possess the land which you have for them. A land flowing with milk and honey, filled of hills and valleys of blessings and grace. Land flowing with milk and honey. A blessed land, an anointed land. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus, wherever we go, we will see the anointing. Wherever we go, we will, we will see you. In the name of Jesus, before this year ends, Provide, protect and preserve your people and use them for your glory. Thank you for your beautiful promise. Continue to lead us and guide us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a beautiful December and uh, may your blessings drink some water from heaven and uh, uh, have a blessed Christmas. Yeah, have a blessed Christmas. Be a blessing. To people, wherever you go, many of them will go to your hometown. Uh, but make it a point that whatever you say will make a blessing and will be a blessing. Thanks for your kind words, David, and 
Shraddha Sambang. Next time I will not come, you have to come to the church. God bless you. Have a beautiful night and, and see you all soon.